Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Res Developer Sessions. Thank you for coming. Thank you, and hello also to the people watching online. Now, a quick note before we begin. There will be a chance for some audience participation in this. You're going to be asked for ideas, and you're going to shout them out. So be prepared to be imaginative. Um, I'm Bertie from Eurogamer, and it's my great pleasure to invite from Media Molecule, John Beach, to the stage. Thanks, everyone. <coughs> you are a fabulous looking audience. I mean, look at you, look at that guy's face. It's beautiful. <laughs> he knows it as well. But, um, so, yeah, I'm John from Media Molecule. I'm the senior principal designer there, and we're going to do a little create session. And I'm going to try and make what you guys shout at me, basically. So I, I'll lead it a little bit, but then I want a load of ideas. So without further ado, I'm going to pick up my move controllers. You can it, note you can use the DS4 as well. I'm just going to use the move controllers because I'm a bit faster with them for the event. Um, so yeah, let's make some stuff. So I thought we could make like an animal mashup to begin with. So I want the name of two animals, and I'm going to try and make it without any reference. And I'm not an artist, so it may look. Horrendous. So, some animals, please. Any, any animal? Kangaroo. Hedgehog and a kangaroo I got. That was amazing. OK, hedgehog. What we, hedgeroo? A kangarog? I mean, you guys can think of the name. Hedgeroo. hedgeroo. OK, we're going to make a hedgeroo. So I'm going to jump back into edit mode here from this level that I left on earlier. Delete everything that's in there. And we're going to try and make a hedgeroo. Now, <clears throat> like I said, not an artist. Uh, certainly have no reference photos. So I'm going to do this all from memory, and I'm English, so I haven't seen many kangaroos in the flesh, but let's see how it goes. <clears throat> so first, which part of which animal are we going to use? I reckon like a hedgehog with like kangaroo legs, yeah? Sound good? Yep, I'd take that as a yes. <laughs> okay, let's do it. Yes, sure. Yes! <laughs> Here we go. So first, I'm going to go into sculpt mode, and I've turned symmetry on so we can start sculpting things symmetrical. And since most biological life forms are symmetrical, that's going to help us out. So I'm going to use a bit of soft blend here, and we're going to start blending out something like a hedgehog face, <laughs> kind of. <laughs> here we go. I know it doesn't look like it at the moment, but it's going to. Sw I swear. I, s I absolutely swear. <laughs> Add a few more bits of details here. And the soft blend is really good for doing this kind of stuff. OK, and then some different shapes. And we can change the color as we're doing this as well. So let's make a more hedgehoggy color, like a brown. There we go. And we get some eyebrows on the go. I thought hedgehogs were blue. Blue, oh, oh yeah. Some are. <laughs> And let's give it some cute little cheeks. <laughs> Hedgehog cheeks. <laughs> and we can select colors from the scene as well. So let's give it a bit in the back of the head. But it's looking a bit odd because it needs some eyes. So next thing I do is make some eyes. So I'm going to go into a new sculpt. And we're just going to make some eyes. So I can also paint sculpts as well. I don't have to just make things like from physical geometry, I can paint on it. So let's go into paint mode and choose some colors. See that? I can turn mirror mode off as well, so we don't have a weird, strange eye. There we go. Uh, what color do we want the eye? Green. 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 I heard green first. Let's get green in there. I like it. You guys are the best. Okay, so a bit of soft blend there. And we can add some like sort of extra detail to it with some different colors. There we go. And then back to black. And I'm just quickly swapping between shapes and brush types. There we go. Yeah, got self night. We make it shiny, like eyes are. And we stick that over there. And we start to make a character. <laughs> it's amazing, right? Did I say I wasn't an artist? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Okay, <clears throat> let's, let's add a cute little nose. Apparently, the shinier the nose, the more healthy the animal is, is a fact that I learned the other day, so I'm gonna make this nose super shiny. Shiny nose. Stick it on in there. <laughs> oh, it's so cute. <laughs> and let's give it a little bit of a mouth as well. Turn mirror mode back on. Cool, okay, so we've got like roughly the head of a hedgehog, but we need like the body of it now. And I'm also gonna add a tiny bit more paint just to make sure it blends into the body color I'm gonna go for, which will be like a dark brown, I think. Like that one, there we go, yeah, that's good. I like that. Okay, I'm also <coughs> going to add some looseness. Now the cool thing about jeans is everything in jeans is made from uh, things we like to call flex which are like um, basically splats like that. You can see them if I zoom in here, it's these splats. So I'm gonna loosen up the back of the head here a little bit. And the reason I'm gonna do that is if we go into our style tools, over here, we can change what the flex look like. So I'm gonna add these, because I know a hedgehog is spiky. Do a bit of that one, and a little bit of this one. And then we can kind of like floof the back of it out. So we're starting to make it more hedgehoggy towards the back, right? And now we can use it to add the body. And what's cool is while I'm doing it, I can also add the spikiness. So let's make a nice hedgehoggy. Again, not an artist, don't judge, please. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Hedgehog body. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And now we need to give it some kangaroo legs, I believe someone said, so <clears throat> let's do that. Uh, kangaroo legs, I'm gonna build these uh, as a separate thing, so we might be able to perhaps add some animation to them later. This is where I'm totally lost now, here we go. So kangaroo legs, I think, maybe start with a shape like this, we'll make it a bit more yellowy colored. There we go, and they've kind of like got... <laughs> <laughs> Is it something like that? I mean, God, I really don't know. <laughs> kind of looks like a, a mech. <laughs> it's, it's, it's good, it's good. Stay with it, people, we can do this. Together, we can create our dreams. That's a... <laughs> what kind of feet do they have? Is it like paws? It's kind of like paws, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, thank you. <laughs> So it's kind of like, no, almost didn't like that. A bit less soft blend. There we go. Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> that's a kangaroo, right? <laughs> <laughs> Let's get it. And then we can we can mirror it as well. Look, there we go. And I think it needs a tail for balance as well, right? <laughs> tail, kangaroo tail, obviously. So I'm going to make another sculpt one more time. Pick the color of the kangaroo leg. And I'm going to use uh, my spline tool here so I can make like a nice tail. There we go. Like that. Boop. And then we can put that in the correct place for kangaroo. Uh, what, what, what did we call it again? A hedgeroo? A hedgeroo. And we can also soften these things up, make them a bit fuzzy because they don't look that furry. So again, using the style tool, it's going to Add a bit of that, maybe a bit too much, just a little bit. Add this brush as well to make it furry, and then make it all stick out on end. Things look so much cuter when they're furry, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> right? <laughs> it's cute, <laughs> I swear. <clears throat> And last thing I'm going to do is just animate it. So what I can do is I can group it all together. So I'm going to make it a group of the head. Then I'm going to stick it all in one big group like this, which means I can move it as one piece. But if I go into it, I can move that bit separately. In fact, if we group those two, go into it, I can move that separately from that. So <clears throat> now I'm going to add a bit of animation. 
tail move around a little bit. And that's just going to play on the loop. Then I'm going to add some animation to the body, or the legs, actually. Legs first. So, boop, 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 boop. It's going to be either dancing or walking. I haven't decided yet. <laughs> and then one more for the other leg. And these legs are not going to be in sync, so. <laughs> Something like that. And then finally, let's make the whole thing move around. Get a nice camera angle. <laughs> it's disturbing. <laughs> you know what? I realize what it's missing. It needs some ears. That's what it needs to make it look super cute. So let's give it some ears. There we go. Get that shape. Let's turn on the mirror. Ah, oh, there we go. I knew there was something missing. I just didn't know what it was. <laughs> and add a bit of pink and a cutout, so then we can cut out the inside of the ear like that. There we go. Way cuter, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> so that, that is our hedgerow. <laughs> Um, we need an environment for it, though. So, anyone got an idea on environment? Underground train station. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Underground train station. I like that. I didn't expect it, but I like it. Okay. <laughs> I guess we should give the hedgerow like a briefcase at some point, but <clears throat> let's do the underground train station first. Okay. So I'm going to go back into sculpt mode, and I'm going to try and sculpt out an underground train station real fast. I don't know how much time we're on at the moment, but let's see. So first, I want to make some like tiles, basically, something like that. So what I'm going to do is get this shape. And this is going to be really useful, because we'll be able to use it at different angles. And then using like a tiny bit of soft blend, it's going to blend off the top of it. So it like rounds it over, like that. Then if we make it shiny, like that shiny, let's catch it on the light. There we go. We can then clone them out like this. And because we're on the grid, we can get things to line up really nicely, especially if we adjust the size. Oop. Adjust the size, wrong button. There we go. Get things to line up. And we can just keep cloning these things out like this so we can make ourselves like a platform off into the distance. It's pretty cool. I like the platform. And then we can even copy all of that and clone it this way as well a little bit, just to make that platform a little bit wider. OK, so we've got ourselves a platform. We need that kind of like yellow line, so it's like, don't go past here when the train's coming. So let's go into our stroke tool. And we'll choose a nice yellow warning color, orange yellow. There we go. I'm going to make it into a ruler. And we're going to use surface snap. And that allows us to stick it straight down onto the surface. And we can just paint out like that. And it will, if I don't let go of the button, will stay on the surface. There we go. Oop. Let go of it again. Come on, John, you got this. I, ha I have a sneaky feeling I'm losing um, Bluetooth tracking every so often because all of you lovely people out there have phones on. And it's going, no, you've let go of it. There we go. Going a little bit more. And last bit. Perfect. So we have the start of our station. So now we need some ground here and the tracks. So let's make grid a bit bigger and select a sort of gray color or down in the tracks. And we can just shape that out using a gesture. Where our train comes in. Then we need it to be inside a tunnel. So let's do the tunnel. So what I'm going to do is use like a, a nice. Mm, what color should the tunnel be? Like pink. 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 Two people said pink independently. Then that was amazing. Okay. Uh, so what I'm going to do is get this and turn it into a tunnel shape. Get that to surround our station of an oblong tunnel, but it's good. There we go, perfect. And then we can just stretch that down to fill out the rest of our platform. Nice, so we're starting to get our underground station. Okay, so we need some entrances over here on the side. 
So I'm just going to cut out some holes for the ins and outs. There's one there. Maybe one down here. And then we can, in fact, we can add some as a separate sculpt, I think. We'll make it a different color. And we'll add some little uh, tunnels down here, just so it doesn't look like it goes into the middle of nowhere, because that would be crazy. that size, put that there, and cut a little hole in it. Oh, I just realized I didn't cut a hole in it. I cut a, a very odd shape in it. So let's set that back to normal, just by selecting on both. There we go. That's better. That's going to be our exit out of this platform for when we want to escape later, because no doubt we will want to escape. Nice. Position that. Copy that over here. And it's really cool in Dreams, you can just copy things and move things around really fast and make yourself an environment. Now I think we need some lighting, because <coughs> it's going to be dark in the underground. So let's very quickly make a strip light. I'm just going to do that by getting a cylinder, stretching it out. and then tweaking it and making it glow. Okay, make it a bit smaller because that was a very big strip light. One there, and a couple on the way down. There we go, so we've got ourselves some strip lights. And in fact, we're going to adjust now the whole sort of lighting atmosphere of the entire level using one of our gadgets, sun and light. So I'll stick this, and this allows us to alter the sun in real time, so let's get some nice light like that and adjust the background light. We want it to be black because we're in the underground after all. And we can even add some grades. And these are like post-processing effects. So like we could add something like glitching like this as if it's an old VHS tape, a bit of chromatic aberration or even pixelate it a little bit. I think pixelating it is a safe bet at this point. <laughs> Just, you know, <laughs> so you guys can't see what I'm up to. And let's get our hedgerow waiting for the train. Who knew hedgerows used the underground? <laughs> okay, and we need a train, right? So let's very quickly make a train. Let's make a Thomas the Tank Engine. No, <laughs> let's not. <laughs> we, put, we put a face on a subway train. How about that? <laughs> okay. Let's do that. So I'm going to go back into sculpt mode. I'm going to turn mirror on to get that very quintessential subway train shape. Turn the grid on as well. OK, so let's get one shape down first. And then we're going to shape it out. Subway train is going to be, what color is the subway train going to be? Orange. Orange. I love such a wide variety of colors today. Orange subway train, I like it. OK, I'm going to stick that there. Then I'm just going to use a bit of soft blend on the top here like that. Get that sort of curved subway train shape. Give it some windows at the front. Nice windows, John. Thanks. There we go. And maybe that one's going to be a door. Perfect. Another one. And then it should have like one of those uh, stripes that go down it, you know. That make it look really realistic. <laughs> Get a nice big long shape out. Put that in there. There we go. Maybe a black one on the underneath. Because it's like dirty, so I have some dirt coming up from the subway tracks. Okay. And let's add a couple more lights so we can see what's going on. <laughs> and we can have directional lights like this, like spotlights. And we can alter that. I know what's going to come later. I've, I've just realized something that's going to be amazing. You guys are in for a treat, I tell you. And we can position it and alter it to our heart's content. Okay. And then I'm just going to clone this train out. <coughs> just so it goes off into the distance. It's like infinite subway train. 
Perfect. Okay. <clears throat> so now I think we could basically make it into like a bit of a disco or something like that. When I put that light on, I was like, yes, I'm feeling the disco vibe. And then we can have our head through dancing, right? <clears throat> so I'm going to get this light. I'm going to make it a bit more disco-fied, disco -fied, just by changing its style here so we can get those like nice disco-like colors or patterns. And we can alter the color as well. Now, what's really cool is the animation thing you guys saw me use to animate our hedge roux. I can use it to animate anything. So I'm just going to animate me cycling through the colors here like this. There we go. Just do that once. And then I can even use that same animation to grab the light here and just move it around. There we go. So now we have the start of a disco scene. Yes. I'm into this. And I turn off my precise moves so I can just move them around a little bit. Let's get one over here because you know you need multiple lights, right? Nice. And maybe a glitter ball. <laughs> Got to have a glitter ball. So let's just get that there, and then we make it nice and shiny and metallic, and loosen up a little bit so it looks like the glitter ball. That loose, John, just a little bit loose. There we go, perfect. Put that there. Can have that spinning around later. <clears throat> okay, so if we press play now, we're gonna see it moving around. We've got ourselves like a nice looking disco, a little hedgeroo. <laughs> He's really jigging to it. So now we need, we need some music to dance to. Now I'm definitely not a music person, so I'm just gonna see if we've got a track we can use already in our sound tools. So let's go and have a look. So over here, I'm going to search and search some music. Got some MM music, music clips. Here we go. If we got anything that's like disco, let's have a look. Almost. I like that. That's cool. <laughs> and we can just stick that in the level. And now we have some music in our level. Ooh, it starts starts slow. Let's let's look inside and see what this timeline looks like. So there's the timeline. This has been pre-made by someone. And all the music and everything is made in dreams from scratch. So when you get your hands on it, you'll be able to make your own music. It's cool. It's cool. OK. So now we just need our hedgeroo to dance and time the music. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the first part of that song off so we don't even have the intro. And I can simply do that by grabbing the playhead up here. And we can just move it to the start. So we're ready to go from the get-go. And now we're going to animate our hedgeroo to dance. Okay, so get the action recorder out again. And channel my inner dancing. Oh, here we go. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> So that's going to play on loop now for forever, for all of eternity. <laughs> and now we need uh, some title cards. Let's have a look so, so we know what's going on. So I'm just going to use my little text gadget here. What are we going to call this level, this environment? What's, what's the name? Anyone got any suggestions? Subway Shindig, I like that. I mean, Recurring Nightmare was good, and it is quite accurate, but <laughs> Subway Shindig <laughs> makes more sense in this context. I think. <laughs> okay, Sub, Subway, Shindig. Capitalize the Shindig, obviously. Here we go. So now we have that over here, and this is like can be our title screen. We can put this into the world. We can change all the fonts. So let's choose a font that looks cool. Uh, I'm really bad at choosing fonts. I reckon that one. There we go. Win. I'm going to remove the background and the border. You can alter all those as much as you want. And I'm going to make it colorful. And I'm going to use the exact same trick we did to cycle the color of the light to cycle the color of our thing here like that. Nice. And then I'm also going to use it to, once I set a couple of options, and our rotation, record one more time. Because, <laughs> you know, the title's got to dance. <laughs> okay. 
let's have a look at what our level is looking like. Yeah. <laughs> Who knew this was going to happen today? I mean, I certainly did not know we'd be making a hedgeroo. <clears throat> and I'm going to get a camera. And so we can frame this up. So in the camera, I can go into it. And this is me positioning the camera now. And you can even tweak it while I position it so I can put some depth of field. So we can make sure that we're focused just on the hedgeroo. It's getting there, it's getting there. And we can even add a couple of extra things like black bars. There we go. OK. What else does this scene need, do you think? Any suggestions? Last minute things? Confetti. Confetti. I love you. I love you. We're going to put some confetti in. This guy, you're the best. OK. The really cool way of making confetti is, again, using the stroke tool that we used to do that yellow line. I'm going to choose a confetti-style stroke fleck. So let's see which one is confetti -ness. That one looks like confetti to me. And I'm going to turn off mirror and surface snap. And I'm just going to paint that like falling down like confetti, maybe a couple. Channeling my inner confetti. How does confetti feel? I don't know. There we go. Then I'm going to animate it just by turning on some animation speed. I'll let time play so you can see it happening. And then we can actually adjust like how many pieces are coming down like this. So we can just say there's a few bits of confetti coming down. We can adjust how much it floofs as it's coming down like that. So that's already looking fairly confetti. I may even turn the music off while I'm talking. <laughs> Not that I don't like the music, you know, it's just, there we go, no music, that's good. So we can carry on with our confetti. Uh, I'm going to make it metallic because all good confetti is shiny, right? So let's make it shiny and make it metallic. And then what I want to do is copy loads so they're all around the world. So they're basically like everywhere at all times. So we can do that by adjusting this little scale number here and making them maybe glow a little bit so we can see them. And we can adjust the time on them so they're all falling independently. And then we can use the same thing to animate the colors of them. So let's get an action recorder out again. Make it colorful and cycle the color of our painting. There we go. So now we get some multicolored confetti. And the cool thing is I put it to go around the camera. So basically, wherever I go in this level, there's going to be this like endless confetti for all time. But I'm just going to adjust it to the scale of this environment. So let's just shrink it down a little bit. Oh, that's a lot of confetti there, John. So much confetti. Shrink it down a little bit more. And then I can just grab it and shrink it. OK, let's see what that looks like in play mode. Yes, confetti. <laughs> OK, I don't know what, how much time we've got left. Anyone got a time? We've got five minutes left. OK, so a what? Who? 12.35, OK, yeah, so I've got about a couple of minutes left. Um, <clears throat> maybe, actually, I should just ask some questions. If any of you have got any questions you want to throw up to me quickly, I can, I can shout them out, repeat them, maybe. This gentleman at the back, if you come up to the front, we've got this mic here, if you come up and ask your question. Yes. It's a good question. Um, it works absolutely fine on both. On the PS4 Pro, you get like a couple of extra options for either improving the frame rate or the resolution. But I use the normal PS PlayStation uh, work to make on it. So everything we make is made to work perfectly well with the standard PlayStation. You just get a couple of little benefits if you've got a PS4 Pro. Any more questions? Uh, come up, come up, uh, take a cue at the mic if we've got a couple. I don't know how much time we've got left. A couple more minutes. Please come up. Oh, there's not a mic there anymore. It's gone. <laughs> uh, quick question. What about the if you decide to use the VR, PSVR with it? How um, is the base version and the pro version differentiate? Uh, so we, we will have P, uh, PSVR post-launch. So I can't comment on what the difference is between the two of them. But generally, I think the PS Pro will always make things like a bit better, basically, like in terms of performance. Hello. Um, Hello. Do you think this bit of kit will put a lot of game artists out of jobs? 
No, I think it will do the absolute opposite and people will get jobs and go into the industry because they would have had no idea that they were game artists until they got to use something like this. Even though it's sort of simplifying the whole process? Even though, sorry, one more time? Simplifying the whole process? Oh, yeah, but I think simplifying is not a bad thing. A long time ago, things were a lot more complicated. We're always moving towards a point of simplification, and simplification doesn't mean less powerful. I just think it's more liberating, and you can do things a lot faster and concept things a lot faster. So I think this will do nothing but help game artists. Okay, thanks. Uh, sorry. That's okay. Uh, so what's your so what's your role with the uh, so what's your role with the dreams somewhere sorry I forgot um, I'm uh, I'm the senior principal designer at Media Molecule so uh, I come up with lots of the tool designs and work with programmers to implement them I also do lots of the in-world level building you know for anything any content we make in dreams uh, I do a lot of that Hi, John. Hello. I love you. Oh, thank you. I love you too. <laughs> How much has the campaign mode come on in the last two years? Because we first saw it a long time ago, and it looked fairly on its way to completion, but the development of the game has come on and on and on in all the time since then. Um, well, interestingly, because we're, we're not cheating at all and we're making the game, the campaign mode, using Dreams, as the tools have been developing up until early access that we're about to go into, uh, the campaign has been developing with it because you can't make the campaign until you have the tools, so there's a bit of a sort of chicken-egg scenario there. So it's very well developed in terms of what we want it to be, and now we're just going to work on getting it actually completely built and out into everyone's hands. bit shorter than the other guy. Um, so you've got the uh, creator access, early access thing coming out in a few days. In, on the 16th of yeah. April. Um, do you imagine that there's going to be a lot of changes that happen before the full release as a result of the feedback and all that kind of stuff? Or is it, is it I'm, your, your feature complete as, as far as you guys are concerned, but do you imagine there's scope for that kind of stuff? Oh, definitely. So one of the cool reasons about having early access, and it's actually, I believe, Sony's first early access, is it's a learning process both for us and for everyone involved in it. So we're going to have lots of forums where people can dedicate uh, their time to ask us questions, give feedback, report bugs. And we're a community-driven company, so we're going to focus on that a lot. We don't know how that will impact the final release, but we know that it will be very important for us going into the future, whether that is at, at the release or post-release. Excellent. I just want to say thank you for doing this. It's a <laughs> fantastic tool. It's my pleasure. <laughs> I stole our compares mic. I feel like a, oh, here we go. <laughs> um, thank you very much, John. That was amazing. You are so quick with the tools. Um, and that was a very freaky hedgehog that you made as well. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not going to sleep tonight now. No, well, I think everyone will agree that was incredible. Please give John another round of applause. <laughs>